Hello everyone! Uh, imagine if you were just, uh, you know, chilling, enjoying your day, uh, wherever you feel comfortable, for example, in a bar, in a library, in a park, and uh, someone walks up to you and asks you if you would like to see a game between Tigran Petrosian and Vasily Smyslov uh, played in the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Uh, your first reaction would be probably, nah, I don't think I would like to see that. That's probably a really long game, like 120 moves that ended in a draw. Uh, but if you're one of those people that would say that, you would miss out on a pretty amazing game, as uh, it's uh, not long and it's not, not and it doesn't end in a draw. Uh, but uh, it, it might well have ended in a draw if it wasn't for for a, a lot of brilliant play. So this is one of the games I decided to show uh, between Tigran Petrosin and Vasily Smyslov, and uh, Smyslov has the white pieces. He opens with knight to f3. Uh, we have d5, so starting off with a reti opening, c4, uh, this is the reti gambit, and d captures on c4. Uh, we have e3, knight to f6, bishop captures on c4, grabbing back the pawn, uh, e6, uh, we have castles, c5 and d4. By d4, uh, Petrosian transposes into the queen's gambit accepted. Uh, we have a6, uh, queen to e2, this is the Aljechin system. Uh, b5, bishop to b3, and bishop to b7 now. Uh, we have knight to c3 and knight b to d7. So this is uh, Smyslov's own variation of the Aljechin system. <coughs> how, to, how to approach it with black. Uh, rook to d1, uh, we have bishop to d6, and now e4. Uh, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, and queen to b8. Uh, here, Smyslov already set up a nice battery here, attacking that h2 pawn. Uh, we have knight back to f3, defending the pawn, and now b4. And here, uh, Petrosian uh, has a lot, uh, has not a lot, but he does have a couple of options here. Uh, he could play something like knight to a4, which does seem like the safest move. Uh, although, if you play knight to a4, uh, you're giving up the e4 pawn. Uh, but uh, uh, accepting the e4 pawn w without castling first could be could be somewhat dangerous. Uh, but there is another option here. For example, uh, there are some tactics that uh, you have to calculate. For example, rook captures on d6. Uh, and after queen captures, now you have this e5 move. Uh, but after knight captures and knight captures, uh, you would get b captures on c3. B cap uh, sorry, bishop to a4 check first. And uh, after the king moves, now uh, b captures on c3. Uh, black would play something like rook to d8, and now after knight to c4, uh, attacking the queen. Also, you have to be careful not to leave the queen on the dark diagonal as bishop to a3 is coming. Uh, but even after queen to c7 and uh, a move like bishop to a3, uh, king to g8, and uh, although this king is somewhat awkwardly placed, completely blocking this uh, rook uh, on h8 from entering the game, uh, it, it is a better position for black, and uh, it, it's uh, it's questionable if white could use the bishop pair uh, and his pieces, which are not ideally placed uh, to, to somewhat uh, hinder black's development and take advantage of this. Probably not, as uh, Petrosian decided not to go for this. So after b4, he decided to play another interesting move. He played knight to d5. And uh, this isn't a peace sacrifice, as he, he gets the piece back very soon. Uh, Smyslov played e captures on d5, we have e, e5 now, uh, attacking the bishop and the knight, so knight captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now castling. Uh, of course you don't want to capture this knight as well, as then f4 pins the bishop and uh, black doesn't really achieve anything here. Uh, so uh, instead of capturing, uh, sorry, uh, instead of uh, capturing uh, first castles, and now knight back to f3, as now the knight really was attacked on e5, and also the knight now protects the h2 pawn again. Uh, we have rook to e8, attacking uh, Petrosian's queen, queen to d3, and now a5. Uh, with the idea of giving some additional uh, protection to this b4 pawn, and also a4 might be an idea in the future. So bishop to g5, Petrosian develops a piece, also now a4 can be met with bishop to c2, and after rook is developed to c1, this bishop can even go to b1. Uh, we have knight to g4, and uh, here is, again a very exciting moment in the game. Uh, Smyslov is now attacking the h2 pawn three times, with the knight, the bishop and the queen. And uh, the best move for Petrosian is playing bishop captures on d5, grabbing the d5 pawn but leaving the h2 pawn. Uh, 
So after bishop captures, king to f1, uh, now comes bishop to a6, uh, pinning the queen against the king, but now you have to block this, bishop to c4, and after bishop captures, queen captures, knight to e5, attacking the queen and the knight. If you move the queen, uh, Smyslov will gladly capture on f3, so knight captures, queen captures, and here you have a position where uh, Petrosian is, uh, Smyslov is still up uh, one pawn that Petrosian decided to sacrifice by playing knight to d5, and uh, also his position is somewhat better, as this bishop on h2 is nicely nicely locking the king on f1. Uh, there's already a nice queen on, on e5 and a rook on e8. This rook is ready to jump into the game wherever it pleases. So it would be a better position for black, but uh, Petrosian decided not, not to play this, as against Smyslov this would be uh, easily, easily losing. So instead, after this knight to g4, uh, he played g3, defending the h2 pawn. Uh, but this is actually even worse. And here Smyslov will really show uh, how, how, you can, uh, <laughs> how you can play against a former world champion, uh, Smyslov being a, a former world champion himself, uh, when, when he plays a move like g3 and he tries to keep uh, everything in order on the board. Uh, but now Smyslov will show you, uh, as of this moment, after uh, Petrosian played g3, uh, it's like Smyslov is explaining to you how how to play chess. I mean, it's like he's explaining to a six-year-old how to play chess. It's also very natural and so logical that it's it's just beautiful. Uh, here he plays the bishop to c5, attacking the f2 pawn twice now. So you have to defend this, but it's not that easy to defend it. Uh, you can't really block with the bishop because uh, e3 square is covered by the knight, by the rook, and by the bishop. Uh, you don't want to go rook, rook to f1. If you go rook to f1, then bishop to a6 is an idea, pinning the queen against the rook. Uh, so here he has to play rook to d2. Now comes another piece attacking the f2 square. Queen to a7. Now three pieces are attacking. Two pieces and the queen are attacking the f2 square. And now you don't really have a choice here. Bishop to e3 is still out of the question, as now four pieces are guarding the e3 square. So he has to play rook to f1. And uh, if you had this position against Petrosian, I'm sure you would all very gladly play bishop to a6 and, uh, you know, enjoy pinning that queen to a rook and winning the exchange. Uh, but Smyslov, again, very elegantly, he doesn't he doesn't rush this position. He, he really... Uh, I'm sure he was really taking his time here and enjoying uh, <laughs> Petrosian suffering here. Uh, he didn't go for bishop to a6, uh, instead he played h6. Uh, because now you have to first decide what to do with the bishop. Again, we said e3 is out of the question. If you play bishop to h4, you get g5, losing a piece. So only move you have is bishop to f4, which... Uh, which uh, pushes the bishop to a less active square and also by playing h6 you create some breeding room for your own king on h7 before going into any skirmishes. So first improving the position and only then does Smyslov play bishop to a6. Now pinning the queen against the rook. Uh, here Petrosian moves the queen, queen to f5 and of course bishop captures on f1 was played. But although bishop captures on f1 is a move you really want to play, you know, grabbing the exchange, uh, you, you have to take a couple of things into consideration here. <clears throat> For example, uh, Petrosian can capture the bishop on f1, he can decide to capture the knight on g4, uh, but there is also one line that Smyslov had to calculate before he captured the rook on f1, uh, <clears throat> sorry, and that is bishop to c2. Uh, creating this knight battery here, go, going for the h7 square. And you had to see that if this was played, that, uh, okay, if you push g6, then queen will capture on g4, no harm done. Uh, but that you can actually play bishop to c4, and that queen to h7 doesn't really give you anything. Uh, after queen to h7, king f8, queen to h8, king e e7, there is really no way to continue checking the black king. And after queen captures on g7, uh, now comes bishop captures on f2, and here comes uh, Smyslov's counterattack. King h1 and now rook to g8, and the queen has nowhere to go. This diagonal is completely covered, uh, g6 is uh, covered, g5 is covered, so only square for the queen is queen to h7, and uh, now bishop to e3 is sufficient for black to win this. As you do have to exchange here, uh, probably queen to f5, uh, now white could even offer a second rook here, 
with the idea that if uh, bishop captures rook, this knight can come to e5 and maybe continue the attack. Uh, but Smyslov wouldn't have to go into any more risks. Uh, he could simply capture the bishop. And after queen captures, now play queen e3 and now it's all over. Uh, you either have to exchange queens and then you lose the game as white or you can try some more checks and after king f6, queen d6 check, king to g7, uh, there are no more checks and uh, although the king uh, did go for a nice walk here, uh, he's back safely on g7 and white can simply resign here. So after this bishop captures on f1, Petrosian decided to play queen captures on g4, grabbing the knight, uh, also now pinning the, the g7 pawn, threatening bishop captures on h6. Uh, again, Smyslov had to take some things into consideration and he decided that this wasn't dangerous. Uh, he played bishop to c4, uh, he has to allow this bishop captures on h6, but uh, bishop to c4, uh, he really enjoys this move, as if, uh, <clears throat> if uh, white ever captures on c4, he will fix his own pawn structure, uh, the bishop is nicely protecting the pawn on d5, and also he's threatening to capture the white bishop on b3, uh, messing up white's pawn structure. So first Petrosian played bishop captures on h6, we have g6 here, blocking checkmate on g7, and now bishop captures on c4, as he decided it was a lesser evil uh, than to allow Smyslov to capture his own bishop on b3, and also he found, uh, he found not, not, not a tactic, but a sea of tactics here. Uh, d captures on c4, and now he plays rook to d7. And this is the, the, the real critical moment of the game, as uh, here you can see that although being down the exchange, uh, he, he's, he's on the attack, and uh, he does have some pressure here, the bishop is very dangerous here, queen is very dangerous on g4, the rook is on d7, eyeing the f7 pawn, the knight is ready to jump into the game, uh, so a lot of options for Smyslov here. Uh, he could go queen b6, he could go queen b8, he could go queen to a6, and uh, of course he could capture on f2 with check. So let's see what, what Petrosian's idea here was. Uh, if Smyslov played bishop captures on f2 with check, uh, after king to g2 your queen is still attacked. You have to play queen to c5 to protect the bishop, uh, but now comes queen to f4, attacking the f7 pawn, uh, threatening queen captures and then checkmate. So you'd have to, here you'd have to either play queen to f5 blocking this, uh, after which Petrosian will capture the queen and then capture the bishop, leaving him with a better endgame. Uh, or you would have to play something like f5, but then you, you're completely lost after rook to g7 check. Uh, you can't go to f8, otherwise you're going to lose the queen after queen to c7, a uh, rook to c7. But after king to king to h8, then comes rook captures on g4, and black is black is lost here. Uh, whatever black plays, white has a very elegant move. Uh, for example, rook g8, now comes bishop to f8, and it's all over. Uh, uh, with, the, <laughs> with the idea, uh, if you capture the rook, of course, you lose the queen on c5. Uh, if you play rook captures bishop, then you get queen to h5 checkmate. And lastly, if you play queen captures on f8, you get queen to h4 check. The king has nowhere to go, only move is to block with the queen, and then comes queen captures on h6, and this is checkmate. So after this rook to d7 move, capturing would be a terrible blunder. So what are what are some other options? For example, we said queen to b6 is a viable option. So let's try queen b6. Uh, queen b6 actually falls to rook captures on b7. Not with the idea that uh, black is lost here, but with the idea that black will no longer be able to win. Uh, here, uh, white, white is threatening rook to g7 again, and you have to you have to stop this. If you play rook to a7 to stop this, then simply rook captures, queen captures, and queen captures on g6. Uh, so you have to play king captures on f7, but then comes uh, queen to d7 check. Uh, rook to e7 blocking, and now queen to d5, checking the king, also attacking the rook on a8, and after rook to a6 blocking this, rook to e6, uh, you don't want to go to the bank, back rank as then queen captures will come with check, so after rook to e6, uh, now you play knight g5 check. King moves, knight captures, queen captures, and uh, now you don't want to be hasty and grab that rook on a8. If you grab it, then comes queen e1 check, followed by queen captures on f2. Uh, the, the real idea here, how to draw with white, is actually queen to b7 check. And now uh, white will always be able to check the black king. Uh, White's idea is that he wants to force the queen out of the out of the e file, so queen e1 check doesn't come with the threat of capturing on on, e, on f2. Uh, so queen b7 check, 
King d7, now Queen e4 check back again, Queen e6, Queen b7 check again, and all the other moves will also result in a draw. Uh, so lastly, after rook to d7, we said capturing is out of the question, uh, Queen b6 doesn't work, what about Queen to b8? Uh, you do have to play something with the Queen. If Queen to b8, again, Rook captures on b7, on g uh, sorry, on f7. Uh, king captures, and now comes Queen captures on c4 with check. Uh, king moves, uh, queen captures on c5 with check, queen d6 blocking, uh, and now bishop checks on g5. King d7, and now queen to b5 check. Uh, queen blocks, and now comes knight to e5 check, uh, forking the king and the queen. Uh, black must capture, rook captures, queen captures, and uh, here uh, you, you're, you're still up the exchange as black, but with white king being very safe uh, behind his pawns and black king being wide open. Uh, there is no way to win this game with black. So lastly, uh, we return to this position. Petrosian uh, just, you know, violently played that bishop captures on c4 and opened up the d-file for his rook, played rook to d7. And uh, you can see uh, what sea of variations Smyslov had to calculate before finding the right idea. Uh, here Smyslov played queen to a6. And queen to a6 is a very devious way of stopping rook captures on f7. If rook captures on f7 now, then after king captures, uh, again queen d7 check, rook e7, now queen d6, d5 check, uh, king to e8, uh, knight to e5 now comes, uh, covering the d7 and the f7 square, uh, threatening queen to g8 checkmate. Uh, but now, this was Smyslov's idea, rook captures knight on e5, queen captures and bishop back to e7. Uh, bishop pins the bishop on e7, threatening queen captures with checkmate, but now comes queen to d6 and uh, white, uh, white's attack is stopped, uh, black is simply up a whole rook and winning this game. So this was Mislov's idea and Petrosian saw this. Uh, after this queen to a6 move, Petrosian instead now, he, he saw that rook captures doesn't work, uh, he played rook to c7, uh, attacking the bishop on c5. Uh, we have queen to d6, now attacking the rook, defending the bishop. Uh, we have bishop to f4, attacking the queen and defending the rook. Queen moves to, to d5, and uh, now we have rook to d7, again attacking uh, Smyslov's queen, and here Smyslov played simply queen to e6, and here he forces the exchange of queens. Uh, queen captures, we have rook captures, and now rook to c7, uh, attacking the bishop. Bishop to b6. Uh, attacking the rook, rook b7, and now c3. Here Smyslov pushes c3, he's creating a passed pawn. We have b captures, b captures, and now king to f1, uh, allowing this knight to move, because the, the knight couldn't really move, rook to e1 was a threat. Uh, now rook to d8 comes, uh, we have knight to g5 attacking the rook, and here there are a lot of uh, interesting moves for Smyslov, uh, rook to d1 being the obvious option, but Smyslov again, uh, really takes his time, I'm, I'm sure he's enjoying this position immensely and plays the strongest rook to f6, uh, allowing, allowing Petrosian one last idea. Uh, Petrosian plays it, knight captures on f7, we have rook captures, and now, as the rook is no longer protecting the bishop on b6, now uh, Petrosian captures it. Uh, so he grabbed the pawn, now Petrosian is up a pawn, although being down the exchange, and uh, again, there are a lot of interesting ideas here, rook to d1, always a very nice option. Uh, but Smyslov again goes for the strongest move and he plays rook captures on f4 and uh, it was in this position that uh, former world champion Tigran Petrosian resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, first of all, the bishop was guarding the queening square. So by removing the bishop, you have to capture the rook as you're going to be down a whole rook. So g captures on f4 and now c2 and there is no way of stopping the pawn. Uh, Rook captures on g6 with check, king f7, rook to c6 blocking, uh, but now would come rook to d1 check, king e2 and c1, and the queen is back in the game. Rook captures, rook captures, and at the end of this very nice variation, Smyslov would be up a whole rook uh, with a completely winning end game. So, yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed the, I, do, I do hope you enjoyed this game as it's uh, it's not very long. It's actually only 39 moves. Uh, but what 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 a you know what a complicated game and what a sea of variation variations uh, Smyslov had to calculate before before actually winning this game against Petrosian. But uh, you know after Petrosian played that G3 move, it was so it was so I don't know 
so educational and so refreshing to see uh, how how Smyslov punishes him. So yeah, uh, that's uh, another game from the 1959 uh, Candidates Tournament. Uh, I, 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 I didn't find uh, any photos uh, of Smyslov actually playing against Petrosian from this tournament. I don't know, even probably in those days uh, they didn't really they didn't really consider it important to take a lot of photos. Uh, you know, there were photos, there were some photos of, of the players from this tournament that were like in the top three. Uh, but not not from like every round like like today, so that's very sad. But that that is uh, that is the case. May maybe somewhere there there you know photos exist, uh, but you know uh, I just don't have access to them. But yeah, uh, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, James Ross, Don Dugan, and uh, David Compton for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. And I don't think I will be able to do another video today as I am making preparations for my stream. Uh, it will start at uh, 6.30 p.m. Central European time. I do hope most of you can make it. And uh, I wouldn't want any of you to be uh, discouraged from playing uh, since, since uh, some grandmasters and international masters applied for the tournament. As uh, th this is actually why I gave out uh, the, the prize money. So it would attract uh, some, some stronger, stronger players and it would give you a chance to play against them. So while I'll be streaming with Jan Almighty, we will you know, be enjoying some games and uh, I will be able to show live uh, some of your games uh, when you will be playing against these strong players. So I do, I do encourage you to apply to the tournament and uh, give it your best, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a blast. So yeah, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. I hope most of you will be able to make it today. Uh, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.